Answers revealed today more than two years after the deadly Black Hawk helicopter crash that th killed three National Guard soldiers in Menden. One of 300 Black Hawk accidents in the past decade. If we can learn the lessons from previous crashes, we can go a long way to preventing the next one. These are revelations we've never known until now. Today, a first-of-its-kind report on helicopter safety has been released. Senator Chuck Schumer calling for that probe after the 2021 crash in Menden. Three National Guard members died in what has been described as a preventable crash. Now the families are calling on the U.S. military to provide more training. 13 WAMS Jackie Napier is here to run down the critical safety concerns and current deficiencies outlined in this report. Jackie. Good evening, Matt. The recommendations provided by the Government Accountability Board, or GAO, aim to improve flight safety training programs for both the Army and the Air National Guard. That report found that more than 90% of Army National Guard accidents were caused by human error. Two years ago, tragedy unfolded in Menden. Chief Warrant Officers Christian Koch, Daniel Priel, and Steven Skoda lost their lives when their UH-60 Black Hawk medical evaluation helicopter crashed during a training exercise. All three were serving with the New York National Guard. Now, another community is reeling following the death of nine soldiers in Kentucky just last week. The Rochester facility does not currently have a simulator, and lack of access to simulators is one of finding the GAO report states contributes to pilots not meeting training goals. I am going to fight hard to get the Air Force and Army to get the resources to improve access to flight simulators in Rochester, in New York, and across the country. The newly released GAO report recommends improving efforts to ensure pilots receive the required training hours and creating a database to track incidents and implementation of post-crash recommendations. An investigation into the 2021 Menden crash revealed that a procedural mistake took place while practicing an emergency training maneuver. Following the crash, the Army changed its policy and declared that maneuver will only be practiced in flight simulators. I know those three men, my son, you know, being the chief pilot, were totally 100% dedicated to their job and wanted to come home at night. And their procedure, like Senator Schumer stated, should never, never have been uh, practiced in the air. Family members of the deceased local servicemen say they are still haunted by what ifs. They hope new safety regulations could prevent future catastrophes. We all know Army, you know, aviation, you know, has its has its danger and and in inbred in it. You can't take it out of it, but you don't you, you don't have to accept accidents. And, and there's always a way to do things better. Hopefully going forward, if this report gets put into practice, we'll have at least one less. The GAO's recommendations cover all of the accidents that occurred between 2012 and 2021. Senator Schumer says it will ultimately be up to the secretaries of the Army and Air Force to implement the suggested safety reforms. For other top story tonight, a major makeover is on the way for one of the region's largest affordable housing communities. It took them long enough. Okay, that's the way I feel, but it took them long enough, but I'm happy that they're doing it. Good evening, I'm Matt Malloy. The Pines of Parenton will undergo a massive $137 million renovation this spring. 13 Wham Cheyenne Walker spoke with residents at the apartments who say this is long overdue. Cheyenne, good evening. Good evening, Matt. Yes, I spoke with multiple residents about this tonight who say for years they have dealt with mice infestations, collapsing ceilings, and severe cases of mold inside their apartments. They say with this renovation, they hope they can leave those nightmares behind. Elizabeth Morell and her son have lived at the Pines of Parenton for 10 years. Morell says during that time, she's experienced nothing but difficult living conditions. We, we shouldn't live, have to live like this. We shouldn't have mouse infestation. You know, we shouldn't have any of that. We shouldn't have black mold. We shouldn't have asbestos. 
hands are dangerous for us. It can kill us. Morrell says now she can see the light at the end of the tunnel following the announcement of a $137 million renovation project at the complex. She's 51 years old. And again, as when we took it over, we knew uh, it needed improvements. And that's why we had planned um, to undertake this renovation uh, back in uh, 2020. And unfortunately, um, again, and as I said, the pandemic delayed the timeline. The developers say all 508 apartments at the Pines will be modernized and designated as low-income housing tax credit units, meaning all units will be affordable for various income categories. And for the first time, 26 units will also be converted to ADA accessible housing. And vacant apartments will be used as courtesy units for tenants to temporarily live in during the renovations. Never have to leave. They're never displaced. Um, all the work will be done. Kitchens and bathrooms will be replaced. Carpets, flooring, all that kind of stuff will get done while they're uh, in, a, in a new unit. And then uh, they'll move back into their renovated apartment. Current tenants say they're frustrated about how long it took to make this project happen, but they are ready to finally move forward. It took them long enough. Okay, that's the way I feel, but it took them long enough, but I'm happy that they're doing it. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to do a great job. And according to the developers, the funding for the project is coming from from loans and tax credits from a number of private New York State agencies and public agencies as well that support New York homes and community rehabilitation. Work is expected to be completed by the fall of 2025. Whole Foods finally open for business in Brighton after years of legal battles. Good evening, I'm Matt Malloy. 13 Wham's Carla Rogner was there as the first customers made their way into that store this morning. Today's grand opening was a long time coming and there are a lot of excited customers doing their grocery shopping here today. People started lining up overnight to be the first ones in the store this morning. I really wanted to be here and be one of the first people. Megan Cooper took the day off work to get in line at 4.30 this morning outside Whole Foods. It was really exciting to be one of the first people to see how much work they put in. I really like sporting places that are sporting local businesses. That line quickly growing over the next few hours. And at 7 a.m., the doors opened and the first customers were greeted with applause. Megan wasn't the first one through the doors. Some shoppers lined up at 8 o'clock last night. A full grocery cart later, her early morning alarm paid off. Oh, I love it here already. Many other customers feeling that same excitement. Just more variety here, and they support local businesses. That's what I like about the store. It has been a long time. We have been waiting for Whole Foods to be open in this Rochester area, and we are really very happy that it's open. It gives us option of uh, good quality um, organic foods, which we have been waiting for. This is a day some thought might never come. This is obviously the culmination of years and years of uh, stress and, and anxiety and, and really teamwork. The Whole Foods Plaza project has been tied up in a legal battle lasting years. Dozens of lawsuits filed by community groups concerned the store would cause traffic backups on Monroe Avenue and take over the public access trail that runs behind the plaza. Late yesterday, an appellate court judge rejected a last-ditch effort to delay today's opening. It was stressful for everybody, especially the team members who didn't know if they were going to have to come to work the next morning. The developers, the Daniele family, feeling relief today. We, we worked hard to get to this point, and, uh, but the work never stops, and so it will continue. Well done. Well done. Brighton's town supervisor says this has been a carefully planned out project. It brings so many benefits. Um, the, the, this plaza will be generating hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of tax revenue for our schools, for the community. So I, I just couldn't be more excited. And customers are excited to try something new. So I'm planning to stick around for a long time and get lots of things. The legal battle for the project is not over yet. The groups opposing this Whole Foods have filed an appeal. But in the meantime, the store is open for business.